You may be feeling how I am, and I'm feeling tired, COVID tired. I feel anxious about whether those I love will get sick or whether I will get sick, whether I or my family and friends will have a job or my son will handle learning in his virtual classroom in our house. This all makes me tired. However, I am also strangely energized. Even during this public health crisis in which untold suffering and loss has impacted communities around the world, there is some good. As we talk about flattening the curve, social distancing, and who is wearing the best face mask, the world is waking up to the concept of One Health. If COVID has taught us anything, it is that our human health is dependent on the health of other species. There truly is only one health, and the health of human and non-human animals and ecosystems are all connected. This growing understanding gives me hope, but make no mistake, we are in the middle of a global health crisis. Crisis is the perfect word for this pandemic. Did you know that the word crisis comes from the Latinized form of the Greek for crisis? A crisis is the turning point in a disease. The moment a patient can get better or worse, live or die. So here we are in a global health crisis. The question is whether the collective we will get better or worse, live or die. But to fully understand a prognosis, it's important to understand how a patient became sick in the first place. How did we get here? Many people say we couldn't have seen this coronavirus pandemic coming, but the warning signs have been there for years. And many scientists and conservationists have been talking about an event such as COVID-19 for decades. Those of us that work on the front line of understanding diseases shared between human and non-human animals, these zoonotic diseases, we were not surprised by this pandemic. We even predicted the possibility of a COVID-19 type event. But here we are with nearly a million human deaths from a virus that began in a non-human animal. A virus that moved from an animal host to a human spilled over in epidemiological parlance. A virus that once in a human host was able to become incredibly human adapted so it could move human to human to human. But how did it actually move from an animal to a human? This is the trillion dollar question. This pandemic started at a live animal market, also call, called wet markets. These are places where animals, both living and dead, domestic and wild, are often housed together under crowded, unhygienic, and stressful conditions. There they stay, waiting to be sold for human consumption. In these markets, infectious agents may easily move between animals as they are breathing and urinating and defecating in the same space, and even are often slaughtered on site. All this mixing allows infectious agents to reassort and mutate, to change their ability to be transmitted between and within species, and to even change their ability to make an individual sick. But let's be honest, COVID is not the only crisis in town. 2020 is not just the year of pandemic. Climate change continues unchecked with record-breaking heat waves and wildfires around the world. Remember Australia a few months ago? That was 2020. Or California, Oregon, and Washington State right now. And what have the animals lost because of climate change? In the Australian wildfires alone, billions of animals died. The loss of non-human species isn't just because of climate change. Since January 1st, 2020, it is estimated that 39,900 species have gone extinct. Extinct meaning no more. Now in September 2020, with a third of the year remaining and our whole lives after that, where do we go from here? I am optimistic that these three major planetary ills of climate change, the loss of non-human species, and even a global viral pandemic have made humanity wake up. It has made us realize that now is the time to turn our COVID fatigue into One Health action. With this growing awareness that we are in a planetary health crisis, we know that we must take action to get past this historical moment. We will get to the other side of this pandemic, but we must follow the science. We can do this. 2020 is a threshold year. We are awake, but what will we do now? 
Abe Lincoln is credited with the statement that the only way to predict the future is to create it. We must create a post-pandemic future in which we don't continue to destroy the animals and plants and ecosystems that humans need for survival and health. Our past actions have created 2020 to be the year of climate change, species loss, and yes, even a global human pandemic. We created this year of planetary sickness. So now let's create the future. Just as this, this global pandemic was predictable by many of us, the future is also predictable if we are ready to create it. 2020 can be a threshold year for good, the year that a One Health approach of people working together for the health of environments, animals, and humans is put into action to overcome the challenges of today and prevent them from becoming even bigger challenges tomorrow. Two years ago, I gave a talk on this same platform where I warned of a coming planetary heart attack. In 2018, we were like the human patient who doesn't take the warnings her doctor has said of a heart attack if she continues with her current lifestyle, even as the signs add up. A tingling in the arm, shortness of breath, weight loss, nausea, fatigue. Now in 2020, we are smack in the middle of a planetary heart attack. The symptoms are all there wildfires moving across countries, the extinction of non-human species at a rate not, not seen since dinosaurs went extinct, and yes, even a global pandemic, a human pandemic that came from our unbalanced relationship with other animals. We shouldn't blame bats or pangolins, the probable original host from which SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, what we should do is reevaluate our relationship with bats and pangolins and other non-human animals and with the environments that sustain all life. And yes, even with each other. We will get to the other side of this pandemic. It will take resilience to recover, to come back stronger than we were before. Stronger and smarter, I hope. If we realize how our everyday actions can and do impact human health, animal health, and even environmental health. What will you do to create the future? Days or weeks from now, when you think back on this subject, I want you to ask yourself, what am I doing to change things? Are you better educated on how 2020 became the year of a pandemic, undeniable climate change impacts, and the loss of biodiversity? Better yet, are you educating others on the global crisis and on ways each of us can minimize our global footprint? Simple measures that we can each take, such as decreasing animal protein consumption, or simply shopping local, or better yet, shopping less. Have you picked your top global crisis, and, and there are many to choose from, and found ways to minimize the impacts on things such as climate change, and future zoonotic events. Make no mistake, we are experiencing a planetary heart attack. We are in a global crisis. The symptoms are upon us. The prognosis is up to all of us, you and me. Will we get better or worse? Will we, in fact, live or die?